Greetings to all my tech heads out there in the Kev Techify Nation. And if you're new here, welcome. In this episode, we're going to look at the Cisco IOS Access. We'll be discussing operating systems, the GUI, purpose of an operating system, access methods, and finally terminal emulation. This episode is part of my series on introduction to networks. I'm Kevin here at Kev Techify. Let's get this adventure started. First, before we got to talk about, we need to show you a little bit about what's happening in the operating system. This graphic right here, sort of, sort of like a bullseye, will help us demonstrate what's happening here. On the very inside center, we have our hardware. Now, all computers, Cisco devices, anything that really runs an operating system has these different layers. So we have the hardware. This is your motherboard, your RAM, your processor, all those components there. Now, in order for the operating system to communicate with that, we run this kernel. And what the kernel is, is the communication. It controls access to the hardware, it controls access to the operating system. It says what functions should happen, what functions could happen. It, it, it's, the, it's the gatekeeper for getting to the hardware. And then the shell, that's what the end user, that's what the end device interfaces with. We're used to seeing um, shells all the time. Now, as we get into it, there's two types of shells or, or interfaces. The first one we're used to is the graphical user interface, or a lot of people say it's the GUI, the GUI. Here is an example of Windows 10. This is their graphical user interface. This is the desktop. This is the part that you interact with, that the end user interacts with. The, then Windows talks to the kernel, and then the kernel then realizes the instructions to the hardware if it's allowed and, and how it's interfaced that way. This is the graphical user interface. There's icons we can double click on. It shows us nice little things. We're clicking, we're pointing. If you're on a smartphone, an Android, Apple iOS, there's all, all these little buttons and icons we're tapping and moving around. There's a fake keyboard, a virtual keyboard on there. Those are all part of that interface. Now, when we deal with some of the more technical things like getting into networking or even some operating systems like Linux without a graphical user interface, we're going to use the command line interface or the CLI is what most people do. This is where you're just typing text in. Oftentimes, some people say this is the command prompt. It's often identified with a black window background and white text, or it could be reversed, typically a white background with black letters, but you're typing in, you're not clicking on icons. There's no pretty pictures there for you to click on, but you're typing it in. This happens to be an example of, um, from Linux here. And what we did is we actually typed in the command LS right here. When we typed it in, we went and it displayed all the directories. LS is for a directory listing of what's in Linux. So whatever directory we're in, you typed in LS and it gave us a list of all the files there. Now, if you're on Windows, you just double click on the Windows Explorer and you'd navigate to the file by double clicking on icons and then it would list it all pretty on the right side. So that's the graphical version of it. This is the command line interface version of it. If you like this episode on the Cisco iOS and you get value out of it, and depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. Doing this supports the channel, which in turn helps me bring you more great content. Subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell to be alerted every time I release a new episode. You can also visit my website at kevtechify.com for all of my details and how to get these episodes in video and podcast form. Auto band and one is called in band. Now, what we're referring to is if we're using our network, if we're using our bandwidth, if we're using part of our network bandwidth to do that. The first method, out of band, is typically done with this cable in the upper left. This is called the console cable. And what is done with this is this console cable. That silver fat part is typically plugged into your computer. 15, 20 years ago, all computers came with an RS-232 serial port on them. Nowadays, you probably have to buy a USB to RS-232 uh, adapter to plug it in. 
And then that second part that looks like an Ethernet cable part, even though it's not, it, it's similar to it, that plugs into the console port on your router. And we're setting up our own little wire between our computer and the network. We're not using our network. We're not using our bandwidth. So this is out of band. You would use this out of band when you first unbox your device. You just got a new shipment in of devices, routers or switches. First thing you gotta do is pull it out of the box, power it up, do some basic configurations. Typically you do the security, you set your passwords, but you also set IP addresses. Once you set those IP addresses, then we can use our network. We can use our bandwidth to do that. And so that's what the in-band method is. And notice in the bottom left corner, that's a window from a terminal emulation program. But right in here, we enter in an IP address. You configured that with the console cable in your out-of-band method. Now you can use the network and connect in remotely. For out-of-band, you have to be within the length of your cable to configure your device. Console cables are only six feet long. So to use out of band, you have to be within the length of your console cable. Yes, you can make a custom cable and have it 50 feet, but that's, that's as far as you can be. Once you do the basic configuration, put an IP address, you can be anywhere. As a network administrator, you could be in your office, feet up, headphones on, listening to music, going down in putty, entering that IP address, connect into your device, and configure the rest of it. Now, where could that device be? It could be on your desk, across the hall, in a different room, in a different building. It could be across the street, across the country, or around the world. You're doing this all from the comfort of your office in InBand. Two types of access methods, in-band, out-of-band. Out-of-band is your console method. In-band is you're using PuTTY. You're using an IP address to connect into that. It was my pleasure to provide you with this wonderful episode on the Cisco iOS access. If you like this episode and you got value out of it, and of course, depending upon what platform you're using, please click that like button, give a five-star rating, leave a comment. This all helps me bring you more great content. Please take a minute to subscribe to my channel. All of my socials and contact information are on my website, kevtechify.com, and you can get all these episodes in video and podcast form. In the upper right is my playlist for my series on introduction to networks. In the bottom right is one of my favorite videos that I linked just for you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of my series on introduction to networks. Once again, I'm Kevin. This is Kev Techify. I'll see you next time for another great adventure.